Okay, today I'm reviewing the GPH Canoe. It's the new device from Game Park Holdings. You might know some of its predecessors, such as the GPX2 or the Wiz, which were very incredible devices back in their heyday. So, uh, this is the front of the canoe. It's got the main logo there, you can see. It's got an analog stick, which is pretty nice to play with, better than a D-pad. Uh, start and select buttons. The four-way buttons, a microphone input, and the home button there. On the bottom we have the lanyard connector, the 3.5 millimeter audio in jack. We have a USB port which you can connect a Wi-Fi, a proprietary Wi-Fi dongle, or even a standard USB stick to stream data off it. Uh, in here we have the proprietary charging port. That's the serial code next to that. And the top we have shoulder buttons. We have a volume control toggle. We have a power switch on the side there. And we also have an SD card slot on the top there. It supports SDHC memory cards up to 32 gigabytes, I believe. On the back, we can see Canoe logo play forward, which is the logo made in South Korea. Autofocus is terrible on this camera. Uh, it also features stereo speakers, which sound really nice, and this kind of rubberized backing on both sides, which protects the device from scratches or abrasion, so I can put it on, say, a table and not have to worry too much about it getting scratched. This is a nice finish. It's really well made. It feels solid. The build quality is excellent. Now, let's turn this guy on. I'll just move him down there. Okay, GPH, that's the main boot up screen. Play forward, I love their logo, because you never play backwards. Oh, you could, but, you know, it would be like in reverse, which is kind of trippy. Okay, um, the, the canoe, my one came preloaded with lots of things, lots of uh, apps and homebrew stuff. I'll just put that over here. So we have a, a range of options. Uh, we got games, apps. Ebooks, photos, explorer, movies, music, but primarily most people will be using the canoe for gaming. So let's check out gaming. I know you're all dying to see the games on here. So we'll just register that click. Okay. Um, also, I forgot to mention the canoe actually comes with a touchscreen. It's a resistive touchscreen, so it's not like your, you know, whiz bang iPhone kind of screen, but it's good enough. Like I can, there's a stylus that's conveniently located on the side here. I forgot to show you. I've only got two hands, so I can't pull it out. But basically, you pull the stylus out, and you can just use it in a range of games that support the touchscreen or even in the menu. So it is quite useful. And it also has a uh, a gyroscopic sensor and uh, vibration inside this little device. So it's pretty powerful. Anyways, we'll get to that later. So. Wow, the autofocus is terrible. Let's see if I zoom in. Um, there's a range of homebrew. See, there are the emulators there. These are all homebrew titles that I, some of them I put on myself. Uh, Ginge is uh, backwards compatibility, the one back there. It allows you to play a lot of the uh, old Wiz games that are ported over to the canoe, which is a terrific idea and well implemented, usually. Um, Oh, King of Fighters. Snakes on Dirk's Core. You know, Acid Snakes. Zelda, I think that's a port. So, the, the emulators I have preloaded on here are the CPS2 emulator, Game Boy Advance, which I don't have any ROMs for yet. Mame Arcade, which runs surprisingly well, provided uh, you can overcome any compatibility obstacles. Neo Geo, I haven't tried that one yet. Um, the main emulators that I use are the 16 bit. Uh, flavors you got the Genesis simulator which is fantastic and the SNES so I've mostly got Genesis games let's have a look at them I'll just click to go into that I'll pressure I say um, we want to load a ROM up so I'll click there we have a range of titles here a 
whole range, probably every bloody SNES game, sorry, Genesis game, it's really a ex definitive list. Yeah. So let's just say we go into Virtual Fighter 2. I like this game. And I'll put the sound up a bit. Yep, it's on. Trust me, the game sounds fantastic. The frame rate is beautiful and the sound is top notch. So let's start. Wait till you hear the music. I mean wow, look at look at the graphics. So select our fighter. I cannot play this because I only have two hands, one hand's holding the camera, but I'll try my best. I mean, that is cool. And the analog stick is really responsive and intuitive to use. I like it a lot. So, as you can see, I'm getting a consistent 60 frames per second. No lag, no delay. It's very responsive and fluid. It's just a really gorgeous to play. Um, time over. Okay, so we can quit that now. Maybe I'll show you one more ROM before we leave. Um, what have we got here? I'll just pick a random one, see what happens. See what comes up. This is called Weapon Lord. It's got a very intriguing name. Never played this title, as you would imagine. Oh yeah. Listen to that MIDI sound in all its glory, 16-bit glory. Sounds unreal. Just listen to those stereo speakers. They pump up some good volume. So there we have it. I hope you liked the review and uh, leave me in your comments or questions and I'll be sure to reply. Thanks.